Hey guys, welcome back to another Trek Yards podcast. I'm Captain Foley. I'm Commander Coggins, and it's sort of a fleet yard spin as well. It's, a, it's a, yes. everything a bit, really. This one. Yeah, this is a Trek Yard slash Fleet Yard podcast. With our special guest, Pierre Droulet. He's joining us yet again. And uh, we look forward to, to speaking with him and finding out a lot all about his career. So welcome back to the show, Pierre. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So Pierre's a model maker, and you may have seen his work. May may have, especially on Star Trek and everything sci-fi. But let's go back to the beginning. I mean, how, when, why? Model making is quite a specific thing. I mean, was that something you enjoyed doing when you were younger? I mean, where, where did this where did this career start? Yeah, it started pretty young, like really, really young, actually. Yeah, I, I started like uh, to do a draw, like I was looking at the cars in the 70s and I thought they were like pretty ugly, you know, those big bucks, and it started like that. So redesigned a little bit more round and uh, so, and um, I really enjoy science fiction at that time. And I was like looking at the the spaceship and redesigning it, like, uh, so it started a long time ago. But I never thought I would do that for a living. That's that's pretty much. I was just doing that for fun, and um, yeah, I've, I've always been into prototype, doing something, improve what I've seen. And uh, and uh, when I came to the U.S., it was more about like uh, because I was just have an idea for a story. So it's kind of funny. Like I didn't come for the same reason. Like I I I had, I'm nobody know as a writer but uh, know me as a writer, but I knew I could do something as hard work. So uh, I ended up being higher, like uh, based actually on three majors uh, on the contest. It's kind of interesting because it's just like I passed like eight eight months doing a demo reel. And uh, one of my friends, I, I was working on video game at that time in the 90s. And one of my friends, I said like, hey, you should apply at Foundation Imagines. They're looking for some modeler. And it's funny, like uh, even at that time, one of the guy I used to work back in Quebec City in Canada, he told me like, you cannot, you cannot have a job as a modeler or he's just like, that doesn't exist. It's not even a job at that time we talk about because everything was still like in transition and- When, when and there's only yeah, 85 polygons you could use. What can you make out of 85 polygons? Yeah. No. So, uh, <laughs> but at the end of the 90s, we're starting to get interesting. Like, okay, now we can actually work with that. And uh, I got hired to work on the roughness. I work on that show and uh, People, like, I guess they liked the way I was modeling and the way also, because I'm from video game industry. Yeah. And that was pretty relevant at that time, so I knew how to model in a very efficient way. What, what did you make on Roughneck? Uh, I was a set, actually, I ended up to be the set supervisor uh, like three months after. So I started as just building stuff. And uh, it's, well, long story short, it's just at one point, uh, because people were modeling and freezing the model, like, they were building, like, with thousands and thousands of polygon and that was the only pretty much one of the only one who can model like in good resolution without like getting like a extravagant about like the number of polygon because that time at that time it was very important mm -hmm. and uh and my model looked nice on on the screen so it was just at one point they said like uh, okay now you're the supervisor <laughs> i'm like okay yeah. so, and this is where actually i met rob i met rob or rob, rob Barton over there and they i got i got attention from him and uh, he Take me with him uh, for uh, to model for Voyager at that time. What was your first Voyager model then? I guess where was the start of the the Trek legacy? Oh, that was funny. The first ship actually it was not a ship I uh, I built for uh, Voyager. It was a probe. It was Friendship One. Oh. Yeah, that was not even a spaceship. And that the the one you saw on TV that was not even the design. I almost like screw myself because the design was so basic and simple. It says. And I just, well, again, I asked, but they told me, yes, do it. But I went way far out of the designs they give me. And, uh, but it's ended up to be approved. <laughs> they approved it. It's like, oh, we like it. Take it. So it's because the, the one was pretty much a box with a saucer on front. I was like, wow, that's ugly. And the, 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 <laughs> I remember the, pro, the, the, super, the, the supervisor, the visual effects supervisor, said, yeah, that's, that's bad. He's just like, well, do you want me to come up with something else? It's, it's, and he said, yeah, sure, go ahead. But he didn't expect me to go like that far out of my way to just make something different. I, I misunderstood what he mean. <laughs> and he said, oh, wow, that's not what they, <laughs> that's not what the design is at all. I said, oh, OK. I said, well, I like it. I said, like, okay, we'll take it. I said, oh, OK. So they ended up turn, turning good for me. So, But in the industry, you usually don't do that. It's not a good idea. Like, you know, once they give you a design, try to keep around it. 
And after I, I, oh, I redesigned also like the, the, the one was kind of fun. The, that was fun because he asked me to design the, the shield of the Enterprise for the season finally. So I give them like three different designs and they, they pick one and I have to build it. So that, that, that's actually my design too. That was pretty much yeah, my second design of a, a Voyager. But I did a lot of stuff based on their design, like you know all the other Star Trek shows. So, but that, the, 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 the shield was fun. Wow, cool. Speaking of Star Trek, what, what's been your favorite thing to work on in Star Trek? Oof. <laughs> Trick question, I guess. But uh, what was well, we have to go back in. Uh, that was fun because you imagine I just come from like uh, you know Quebec, Canada, and it's mm. the, the the fact that my English was pretty bad, and just to come here and uh, get a job was pretty much a miracle because it's just like everybody told me you're wasting your time. That's not going to happen, and um, my first movie I work on was, and that's really for me. I was very proud of it. Uh, it was in 2002 or 2001. Uh, Ron Thurton, he passed away, and another one who passed away. He gave me, he's the one who actually uh, hired me at the Foundation Imagine, but he saw my work and uh, they asked me to do the Romulan City for Star Trek Nemesis. Ah, and cool. So uh, it was based on the matte painting of a guy who so was my hero, like um, I said, Thurton. Uh, Newton? Yeah, so some, and uh, it was based on a matte painting, but they actually decided to push in the camera in, and the matte painting didn't hold anymore. So again, I went out of my way to just redid the whole thing in CGI. <laughs> that was supposed to be a night shot, and when they saw it, because I was giving my render in daytime, I'm like, oh, that looks much better in daytime. Let's do it in daytime now. <laughs> so, something like that. I mean, that model is has a sense of scale because it has a physical sense of scale, but obviously no individual piece needs to be too detailed because you're only a certain distance away. At what point, though, do, is, is there too much detail for you? I mean, is it just about how much time you have to build? I mean, at what point do you, Pierre, say, this is um, done? This is where you get the tricky part. You have to ask a question. Like, and uh, this is where you get screwed sometimes because they decide to change their mind and do something else. Uh, mm -hmm. In that case, it was not the case, so they, they end up with the plan. Um, yeah, it's it depends the detail and all of that. It depends what, how long do you give me to do that? So I think for that city at that time it was something like a month. Uh, uh, I could build like for a month. So I, I have for me a month. I have plenty of time. I, I can do a lot in one month. Yeah, I try I try to to schedule my time for what they need and where because also I I built the res part like with the tracking like where around. If you go like outside this area, everything starts to go like really just a little bit more boxy. But the main one was the building in the center. This one I put my the most attention. And after that, I just like go out, 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 out. So that was, that was fun. So that that's, that was my first movie. So it's still a, it's still a like the, 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 the NXO one was pretty much my first spaceship I built for like really for a TV show. The, uh, the city, Roman City was pretty much a big deal too for me at that time. So I, I should I should probably say the thing about me I just I I do stuff and just move on when it's done it's done I just move on I should just keep like other people do like I did that and suddenly you get famous but like I, 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 I after after the fact I'm like huh what did I don't do what did I do that <laughs> I shouldn't do that damn it <laughs> well, I mean you were then brought on for discovery you know the there's a reasonable gap between so the, I end up doing some Klingon ship. Uh, it was the Raider, so uh, after that it was the Cleave, Cleave, Clove, whatever it is, the big ship with Cleaver, Cleaver. Ship, yeah. Yeah, it's been a while. And I did a few, I did all the background, pretty much most of the background, uh, Klingon ship, the Chinzu, uh, which one also? Which is quite a big one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the Chinzu, the Chinzu, they were supposed to keep it a little bit longer at the end. Because uh, anyway, the story has been changing like over and over and over with Discovery. It's just like, again, I'm not going to go into detail. But uh, they could not figure out what to do with that uh, uh, Discovery ship. And uh, they end up taking what it, what it is today. Like, uh, I'm going to release a new video soon. And uh, it's nothing to do with Star Trek, but it's inspired by Star Trek, like with the new uh, the, the USS Jeffrey. And you guys probably going to have a kick out of uh, at it because it, this if you like the other one the other one it's kind of ironic the 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 one with the USS Jeffrey when I did this one I didn't put too much time on it on that video I just put stuff I have already and put it together 
Mm-hmm. And people, like, I got like two million hit on it. I was like, oh, that's interesting. Just I didn't see that coming. So we're just like, uh, but uh, the the new videos coming, I put much more time on it. You know, you're gonna see like, uh, and uh, you have like you, it's more like a, it's not Star Trek. It's mostly like, like the one of the prototype I did. What the discovery could be, mm-hmm. it's one in there. You, but you're gonna recognize it anyway, easy. So uh, and I, so you have the European ship with like the European nation, you have the Russian ship, the Chinese and all everybody, everybody has their, has their ship and uh, it's, it's pretty cool. So now it's just everybody's going to be happy because I saw the critic, everybody, oh, it's always the American, the American, but <laughs> now you have the, the Euro- European ship and the, the, the Russian and Chinese and everybody's there with their That's ship, cool. with, the flat, with the flag on it. And uh, so it should be cool. I think people's going to have a kick out of it. So you've also worked on one of one of the best reboots, reimagining uh, series ever, in the form of Battlestar Galactica as well. So tell us a little about that. How'd you get involved in that project, and what exactly were you responsible for? The thing is, like at that time, I was working full time on the Enterprise uh, NX01, and um, they asked me to jump into. Uh, Better Star Galactica at that time, and uh, but uh, my company didn't want to because they bet to have the contract to do the visual effect. So I could not, for a conflict of interest, I could not work on the Better Star Galactica. This is why I started to work on the second season. So when actually uh, Enterprise, they actually been cancelled. So suddenly, like, oh, you're free. Why don't you just come with us? So. Uh, <laughs> And uh, the, the way actually uh, I got the attention of Gary Azzol because he bought the Viper I did for a video game like uh, about two years before. Now, uh, how, how did you get involved in that? I mean, that's quite a, an old project as well to do. Good no, it's, it's, that's, that's some, it's another company that were making a video game and they needed cutscene. And uh, at that time, we talk about the beginning of 2000, the, the, those, those models was very, were very low res. And you know it was boxy, and they looked like nothing. So, and I was a big fan of Battlestar Galactica at that time, and that was my chance. It was like, wow, it's probably the only chance in my life I'm gonna have to redesign the, the Viper. <laughs> so, just like go, out. like yeah, I was like, can I do it? They said, go ahead. We don't have one. It was like perfect. So I just did it. And, that was the uh, Viper Mark II that they ended up using, right? Yeah, it's very awesome. similar. Like uh, it's very similar. The like the like it's more like the one they use. Well, if you see like the, the video game uh, from the 2002 of Battlestar Galactica, if you see their cutscene, that's my ship. And when you see this ship and this, if you see the one from Blood and Chrome, it's basically yeah. a very maybe at 90% the same ship because I put more detail also with the one for Blood and Chrome. Gary has all like some uh, known like uh, some some I work. This is how I end up to be in uh, in Battlestar Galactica. And then what did you? So you come in season two. So obviously. One odd thing about BSG is that they didn't really introduce any new ships. As as you know, ship lovers, they had this fleet, and there's about three new ships the entire rest of the run. So obviously, you come in season two, everything's built. What did you contribute then? That's a joke. I rebuilt pretty much everything. <laughs> <laughs> if you look, if you look, if you look the first season, even the Raider, and you look at the second season or the third season of the Raider. Like so, they call it the Raider Advance. So because I changed, they 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 didn't like because they thought it was too flat. So I make it a bit more like uh, stretchy in the neck, like like round and the, like the the head bigger on the. I redesigned uh, also like the uh, because the Gary is funny. You always find something. Hey, I don't like it. Hey, I don't like it. We Re- play with it. And he the, the one he really hated is the jeep, the, the space jeep, the, the the raptor, like the the space jeep, like oh, the, the, the season one. He, hate, he hated that that ship. But the problem is they built it practical, so I was kind of screwed. So I told him like, what about if we put some kind of weapon on it? He's <laughs> like, yeah, go ahead. So, but if you look at the CGI and actually the the models they have, I, I modify a few things on it to make more like a little bit bulky, like. Um, um, so that was pretty much the first ship I worked on that when he wanted he hated that this is why when you look at the first season the Raptor is also is always lit in a way like in the dark you barely see it that was a reason for it because <laughs> he hated it and when you look at the second season suddenly ah, you see it and you see all those weapons on it and everything oh that's cool same thing with the Mark 7 if you look at the Mark 7 for if you look after that it, it looked different 
but again, they built one on set. So when you look the one flying and the one on set, they actually look different. And I end up putting the the, the front of the, the the engine, like the intake of the Mark II. If you look at the second or third season, they become square instead of round, like they were supposed to be in the beginning. Mm. So it's uh, yeah, I changed a bunch of stuff. When you when you pay attention, like huh, look at that. And um, yeah, I built a bit of like even like the 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 ring ship. I rebuilt it too. Gary didn't like it. Yeah. Gary didn't like a lot of stuff, so he made me, <laughs> he, he, he kept me busy building. Oh, so the, I, I designed also like the stealth ship, the stealth one at one point. Mm. They did Blackbird. one in the first season. Yeah, there's one, he didn't like it, so he said, redo it, this one too. So pretty much I, 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 I was busy. <laughs> <laughs> and actually the ship that never appeared in the show, uh, well, mm. oh, the, uh, really... well, no, the, the stealth star. No, you did. Oh, he, actually, we use it in um, the the movie. The the that was with the Valkyrie, in right. uh, not okay. Bell and Chrome with the other one. What is the Razor? Razor. Okay. So we we okay. use that uh, stealth stealth one in the Razor. Because I've seen it. I'm like, the, it's that, such a cool design. Where where is it? You know where? It's just yeah, didn't see it. What about Pegasus? Yeah. Do you have any hand in Pegasus? No, nope. yes, I didn't touch that. I, you know, it's funny, I have a design, like, because Gary, uh, he asked me to redesign the, uh, Battlestar, the Battlestar Galactica ship. And uh, I did a design for it. I didn't build it in CGI, but actually I did a drawing of it, what you should like. It was more like the little bit, like the original, like the the one, I never liked the ones they did with the rig, the, the, the because I, th I don't think he liked also like the one, uh, the big Battlestar. Galactica with the it looked like a Zeppelin, like you know, like the the ones they use for the show, pretty much. Because they rip off the story of they rip off all the plating on it, and this is why you see all those those. Rip. It kind of looked funky. So uh, the design I did was more like the original, but more like where? But the head was more like a 747 instead of a all flat. It was like the engine was going up, and it was kind of nice actually. And the front was like the the no, uh, it's like a 747, you know those plates. Like the, 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 the neck, the the head was going a bit hopper and it was more, he looked like a bulldog. He looked very strong. He looked like a, you know, he looked, he looked aggressive the way I did it. But the thing is, during I was designing, they decided to go with a famous designer. Oh, you, oh you, saw, you, saw, you saw the Valkyrie. The, the Valkyrie was more like the, the, the Balsari Galactica was going to be. Huh. More like Very this sleek. Valkyrie yeah. very, very sleek. So as a way to kind of end this whole podcast, let's talk about the most current thing you're working on, and that would be the Orville. Uh, I hear you've done a lot of fantastic work for that. So exactly what uh, what have you been up to with that? Uh, Orville is interesting. Um, they called me like two years ago. Like way, I didn't know it was going to be Orville. I didn't even know it was for um, uh, Zeph McFarlane. Um, I was right about to start with Star Trek Discovery to build the, the ship. And um, I received an email, a guy like, uh, he said, hey, we, we work on a new TV show and uh, you want to work with it? And just uh, say, well, I can because because I'm working on Star Trek right now. And they called me another three months after. I was supposed to, de actually, the ironic part, I was supposed to design that overall. That's the joke. And uh, because he didn't have any design until like, I think like 2016, December or something like that. Uh -huh. Like uh, they didn't have any design for the longest, and they called me again. Do you want to do it? So I, I can. I'm busy. Uh, I, I wrote him back. Say if you still need a, a, to design that ship, let me know. It's like no, we we're good. We we have a design already. You say okay, good. And uh, so the time passed by, and uh, with uh, a company end up doing the visual effect for it. And but the thing, the company who did the visual effect for it, they actually, they actually because they did a big practical all of it, and uh, yeah, I don't know you guys saw it, and what the they did a scan. You cannot use that a scan to because it's we talk about millions of polygon useless, and they just like I don't know that thing was really heavy, and they tried to clean it up, but it didn't work. It's just it's just a big mess, and uh, they end up. That company was doing the visual effects. They end up like, like, ditching them or whatever happened. If there is like some things that didn't work, and the uh, company I used to work for, they called me back 
And they said, hey, if you want to come and work on the Orville, we, we have to rebuild that ship. And I was like, oh, that's ironic. You just like, they asked me to design it. So I was curious to see what they come up with. And, I, and at the end of the day, the, the ironic part, I ended up building it anyway. So that's it's kind of a weird story. It's just that thing been dragging until I end up building. The guy wanted me to build it in the beginning and design it, but I actually end up building it, their design. But if you look at the the prop, actually I fixed their prop because their prop was kind of, and I did some modification to make it more straight. But so they, they never noticed that. But you have to you have to know like to see the the CGI model and uh, the prop side by side to see like oh I can see the difference now. All right. Well, thank you, Pierre. Looking forward to speaking to you. We got some specific things we want to talk to you about in fu- in the future. So we're looking forward to having you back. So again, thank you for joining us. It's always an honor to have you here. So thanks. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having me. And we, we hope that not only the idea of how much effort it takes to build these models, but also appreciate the subtleties, the little details, the things that, you know, you never knew because there's only so much resolution you can put on the screen. And yet modelers of, of, of your caliber tend to get a little bit that extra mile so it'd be fun to to have fans of just modeling learn oh, right thank you very much i appreciate it. <laughs> all right so until next time everyone i'm captain foley i am quantum cockins and, and, <laughs> and we'll see you all in the future bye guys bye thank you